In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning. reading a couple of verses from also the Gospel of St. Matthew. This is from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew. <clears throat> Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither Moth nor rust destroys where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And this, uh, I have a little uh, snippet here from St. Athanasius the Great. For what use is existence to the creature if he cannot know his maker? How could men be reasonable beings if they had no knowledge of the Word and the reason of the Father through whom they had received their being? They would be no better than the beasts. They had no knowledge except earthly things. And why should God have made them at all if He had not intended them to know Him? But in fact, the good God has given them a share in His own image that is, in our Lord Jesus Christ, and has made even themselves after the same image and likeness. Why? Simply in order that through this gift of God-likeness in themselves, they may be able to perceive the absolute image, that is, the Word Himself, and through Him, the Word, to apprehend the Father, which knowledge of their maker is for men the only really happy and blessed life. The foundation of Orthodox Christianity is not only that God exists, but that we can and must know Him. Knowing God for the Orthodox is the only real purpose of life. As St. Athanasius says, what use is existence to the creature if he cannot know his maker? This is a great, great question. Jesus says, and this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. God can and must be known. This is our orthodox testimony. God has revealed himself to his creatures who are capable of knowing him and who find their very lives in this knowledge. God manifests himself. He has not simply given us some data about himself. He makes himself known to whom he has created in his own image and likeness for the express purpose of knowing him and all things in him, and delighting in this ever-increasing knowledge for all eternity. This is, this is our purpose, so to speak. When Jesus says that uh, to know God is life everlasting, this is what is before us to achieve in our lifetime. Can we know the entirety of God in one instant? No. Can we ever know the entirety of God? No. But can we know God? Yes, absolutely. And we have a couple of thousand years of people who have done so. And now it's our turn. We can know God. We should know God. God is graciously revealing himself to us whenever we give him an opportunity. 
He has guided our life to this end. We are here. He guided us here. The way to the knowledge of God, according to the scriptures and the saints of the church, is not by reason. God cannot be reached by rational operations and logical deductions. God is known by faith, by repentance, by purity of heart, and humility, which is poverty of spirit, by love and by adoration. Which is to say that God is known by those who are open to his self-manifestation and self-revelation. We who are ready to yield an acknowledgement of his power and action within the world and ourselves. And that acknowledgement takes the form of our praise, thanksgiving, love, and obedience. Maturity, Christian maturity, uh, spiritual maturity, is an ongoing thing. And, it, and in some ways, it's not related to our childhood at all. Um, can we have a, you know, a genuine spiritual life and be a child? Of course. And, and be an adolescent at any age and time. But our maturity as Christians has to do with our uh, ability, no matter what our age is, to be in communion with God. So that God... We can live with God and in God, and God can live with us and in us. So we are sharing a life. God made us in His image and likeness and given us these faculties so that um, we can be aware of Him and what's going on inside of us and outside of us at the same time. That we can know Him. We can know this spiritual being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that lives inside of us and outside of us there's no place where God isn't we cannot escape God what we want to do is get to know Him open our hearts you know there's that old saying sounds trite but it's true to know God is to love God. To love God is to know God. Love is, uh, real love is very risky and scary, and most people have uh, so many inhibitions that it's difficult for people to love. But we have got to be able to love God unconditionally. Just love Him. If you know Him, you can love Him that way because He's so lovable. And if you love him, you will get to know him. How can we identify him? Well, his face is right here, and his words. He came to us and showed us himself, and showed us what he's like, and what his nature is, and taught us how to relate to him, and how to relate to each other. We know God when we can uncover and rediscover the original purity. This happens by God's gracious action in us. Through His divine word, our Lord, and His ever-present Holy Spirit. The pure in heart see God everywhere, in ourselves and everyone and everything. A couple of verses from the Psalms. We know that the heavens declare the glory of God and the earth shows forth the work of His hands. We know that heaven and earth are filled with His glory. That's from Isaiah. We are capable of seeing and believing, of believing and coming to know. 
And it's the fool who says in his heart that there is no God. He does not seek God. He has fallen away, does not call upon God, and has no understanding. According to St. Maximus, the confessor, the original sin of human beings, which infects all of us voluntarily or involuntarily, is love of self. A person becomes blind because of a willful refusal to see, to affirm, and to delight in what God is presenting to him or her personally. You know, they, people talk about a leap of faith. You know, what is a leap of faith? A leap of faith is that God is purposefully trying to reel us in for eternal salvation. And we have to be willing to take it. He's giving it to us. He's forgiving us all of our sins. He's feeding us with His very blood and body. He sanctifies us. He has given us the Holy Spirit to guide us, to sanctify us, to inspire us, and to help us on our way through this life. He is not keeping anything from us. Jesus' accusation, and he quoted Isaiah when he said this, is the foolishly, uh, the foolish ignorant that they have eyes but they will not see, ears but they will not hear, and minds but they refuse to understand. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. St. Sophroni has something I would like to bring up. Blessed, because when we recognize our poverty of spirit, strength comes from on high to lift us to God. Without this recognition, the recognition of the poverty of spirit. Without this recognition, there is no impulse to reach up to heaven. Self-satisfaction is the symptom of either spiritual paralysis or a decline, spiritual decline. Constant judging of ourselves against the divine commandments intensifies our awareness of being distanced from God and deepens our understanding that pride is the root of all evil. This self-love, this sense of pride. Our insecurities that keep us from loving God without any reservations. We must be able to see this clearly. You know, this, this uh, poverty of spirit, this humility that uh, St. Sophroni is talking about, this is when, you know, we can, in ourselves, become that uh, spiritual zero. Uh, yes, we're made as image and likeness. We have our own identity, and we are a son of God at the same time. But we want to be still in that. We don't want to create an image of ourselves, some kind of false persona. We just want to be the person that God made us to be. That takes a sense of humility. And in that humility, God can approach us. And when God approaches us, we can love Him for who He is. God's promise is that those who seek will find. Those who seek Him, those who want Him, those who want to love Him, those who want to be close to Him, He is available. They will be able to find Him. In the name of our Lord and in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.